All right, those of you that are a little bit familiar with my Magic History pre-arena will know that uh, this first deck we're starting out with today, this is kind of my kink. This is, uh, this is what I'm into. We have a mid-range deck with a two-card combo finish. So, uh, Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose here. Whenever an opponent, whenever you gain life, an opponent loses that much life. Can also give your creatures life link. Paired with uh, Revival Revenge, Revenge Half being the combo part. Double your life total, target opponent loses half their life, rounded up. So, kind of get to two card combo kill people for most life totals here, because doubling your life total counts as gaining life. So, you get to go ahead and uh, Revenge with Veto out to kill most opponents. Um... What else? What else do we have going on? So the core of the mid-range part of the deck is we've got the old Ixalan Explore Package here. we got Wild Growth Walker, Merfolk Branch Walker, and Jade Light Ranger as cards that give us board presence against aggro, generate card advantage, and also give us another source to gain life with Vito. Vito plus Wild Growth Walker sounds fantastic. Uh, yeah, Exquisite Blood. Also, combos here with Vito. Technically, um, whenever an opponent loses life, you gain that much life. So, these two instantly kill the opponent. You'll note I'm only playing one copy of Exquisite, Exquisite Blood here. Because this is a 5-mana enchantment that doesn't impact the board. So, it's kind of a hard sell. Whereas, Revenge Revival, the revival part of this, is a card that works with the Explore Package here. So, in addition to the Explore Package working with veto revival also works with this so this kind of has synergy with everything else we have going on we've got some agonizing remorse and maelstrom pulse as main deck interaction along with scavenging ooze and then we've got uh four copies of thrag tusk here the old swag dad himself just as a good value creature that also gains life so if you curve veto into swag tusk swag tusk you know it's kind of like a giant siege rhino in a way so let's go ahead and pop into some games here with this and uh see how it goes Got a number of three different green decks today. We're going to try this Veto combo deck. We've got some Elves to try and beat people down with. We've got some Green Black Citadel. Tomorrow morning is the fourth Oglandia Open. We have about, uh, where are we at? I think we're close to 80 people when I checked this morning. Yeah, we're at 79 people at the moment. So still plenty of room for folks to sign up for that if people are interested in playing in that tomorrow. Would Command the Dread Horde fit in this deck? What problem are we solving with Command the Dread Horde that you think my deck has? What are you cutting for it, and why is that the cut? Sell me, sell me on why you think I should put a five, a, a six mana card into my deck. Yeah, there's a good chance that, like, our deck is just too slow and fair. Like, you know, something we've talked about with how card designs have kind of gone in recent memory is that, uh... That's what I'm searching for. Well, hopefully this is a spell. Alright, it's a good one to get. Is that, uh, blocking's not super good in magic these days anymore, so... It'll be interesting to see if what this deck is doing can be competitive in that regard. <sighs> kind of an awkward spot. I think I just play Veto and then hope to uh, hope to spike an untapped land next turn for these two. I am playing a 26 land deck. Nailed it. 
This helps us get to our next land. Stabilize the board here a little bit. Until they find a crater hoof. Just an incubation druid deal. They can fart this this turn. Okay. So they're dead to a land next turn, right? Dead to untapped land. They're also like not in a great spot because next turn I can give my things lifelink and attack. Which will cause me to gain 10, 11. So that's my so that's my general question to you, Master. Is like if you can't think of a good reason why a card's a good include, like why ask me to tell you why it's bad? Like those are those are very very similar things, right? Like if there's if you can't think of a reason why it's good, like why do I need to tell you a reason why it's bad? I could I could attack with these. I could attack with these. Uh, we don't have lethal, right? Because we only have eleven. I think I, I think I'm gonna do this and then crack them for eight here and then this sets me up to kill them next turn seeing seeing Vito being kind of good as a self-enabling threat here this will die we'll get a three three Hey, thanks for the 27 ones, J Money. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Yeah, didn't didn't even need the revenge revival here. Just veto, veto being self-enabling more than enough. Eliminate and heartless axe sound great. Uh, I think I just I think this is just like an all Doom Blades on deck matchup. I'm gonna trim some of that. You leave it. Leave me leaving an anagonizer more. So now I'll leave the exquisite blood in. For the combo kills. Six, seven, eight, nine pieces of removal. Sounds good. Uh, this is match one, game two. I'm starting, so for, those, for people that are my regulars that haven't kept up over the last little bit, I'm starting later with my streams these days. So I'm going live about 11 a.m. Central. With the goal being, uh, I've been trying to be live for a little bit every day instead of just being live for four or five days a week for longer streams. I am planning to take Sunday off because Saturday will be a longer day with the open. But in general, I'm trying to be live every day for like four to five hours or so. Do four to five hours, seven days a week, as opposed to eight hours, uh, five to six days a week. It isn't really a similar, similar effect though, Dig. Like, four mana Soren isn't a two-card combo kill. Like, when we have board presence, it's similar. But, like, if I have board presence, Vito is just self-enabling, right? So why do I need Soren? Blightnin, thanks for the ten months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Gilded Goose. 
Skip. Dwinnin's Elite. I wonder if I want some kind of sweeper in my sideboard for this deck. Something like Cry of the Canarium, perhaps. So, growing rate's gonna flip. Oh, la right, Languish is a card we get to play now. Yeah, Languish is probably perfect. Forgot that was legal. Uh, there's a reason why there is only one Exquisite Blood. The person who submitted the Veto combo deck requested Exquisite Blood as an inclusion. I am, I am expecting my conclusion at the end of the set to be Exquisite Blood is not worth playing, cut it. Eh, Pestle and Haze doesn't seem particularly good. I think I'd rather have... I think I'd rather have something that kills slightly bigger boards. I'm gonna... I'm gonna cut you in on a little secret. The five mana enchantment that doesn't impact the board that's only good with my other card that's good on its own probably isn't very good. Yeah, Vito. Vito's very good. Yeah, Exquisite Blood with Vito is a deterministic two card combo kill. Was there a reason to not double block and kill the elite? No, I should have. The, the reason to not double block and kill the elite was I was reading chat and talking while we were playing. Mm. Next turn gonna be good, chat. Next turn, next turn gonna be good. Don't hoof me. Don't hoof me. Don't do it. No blocks. For a Riptide Rex Rune Terra deck. Sounds good, Kraken Hoogs. I appreciate the support. I'll get that after we're done today. Yeah, the old, the old gain 12, deal 12. Are we on my opponent's priority here at Enter Combat? Has my is my client disconnected? Like, what's going on here? I feel I feel like I should reconnect. I don't see a timer going down yet. Do we think I should? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reconnect real quick. Quality, quality piece of software. I don't want to auto pass. Because if it's lagged and it goes, it could skip my turn. The fact that it just literally doesn't tell you when you're disconnected. Nope. And this is this is the tough part, right? So like we've reconnected and now their timer's going down. So my opponent's the one that's disconnected here, it looks like, but the client doesn't tell me that they're the one that's disconnected at any point.
The only thing that's different with using Arena through the Epic Game Store is the initial updater and launcher. The actual client is identical. Alright, so let's leave a green untapped here. So if we hit an untapped land, we get to play Branch Walker as well. Nailed it. Ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain! I can't hear you! Oh! Oh, yeah! They're actually, they're actually just dead to, like, veto activating. All right, uh, the person that submitted the deck said I can cut the exquisite card, so I think I'm actually going to do that. I think, I think we're actually going to become a little bit less... Um, I kind of wanted two more pieces of removal in here, maybe. Do I need more removal? I'm going to cut the exquisite blood. We'll keep these for now. I almost feel like I could go down one of these, perhaps, but we'll see. I'm going to slide a scavenging ooze into the main deck. I think I want a couple of languishes in the sideboard. Just craft these we're gonna use four at some point. No worries, sword. Yeah, our, I wasn't sure if you disconnected or I disconnected. It's possible Arena just had a hiccup too. Good luck in the rest of your matches today. Yeah, yeah, I could see play play glass of this being okay. I don't know. I kind of like I want another scavenging goose in here. I guess I guess I could cut cut this and like just play four skews main. Like skews is like pretty good. Like this is this is pretty reasonable, all things considered, right? Skews Skews is a rock classic. You're not wrong. Remember when that was just a commander card? Yeah, randomly, randomly hosing graveyard decks game one is a power play for sure. Yeah, it even technically has small synergy with uh, with Vito. Light of hope in the board. Um, I don't know that that sounds particularly useful. Vienna Vis, thanks for the brand new tier one sub. I appreciate that. Welcome to Oglandia. Thanks for keeping me around. That is a scary one. Crossed. Thanks for the 10 months. I appreciate it. Welcome back. Probably dead here if they have another threat. They do not. That's great.
That one can stay right there. I like the way you do that right there, right there. Right there, right there. Demonic Embrace, yep. Yikes. Well... Probably dead, chat. A little bit, a little bit too far behind. Post board, post board will get to board in a bunch of removal spells. Be much better off, obviously. But we were on the draw and didn't have a play till turn three here, and they had a little bit of evasion, so not a lot of player agency present. That's just how magic goes sometimes. It's a shame. It's a shame we don't have one more point of life, huh? It's a shame we don't have one more point of life. Can you explain briefly how to get into the open? Yeah, you just sign up on on the MTG Melee page here. All the information is available. You'll need to create an MTG Melee account and then link your subscribe Twitch account and your Discord account to it, and then use the website to pay the entry fee and join the event. You'll also need to make sure. And this is not a requirement to initially sign up, but it's going to be a requirement day of. You need to make sure you are able to broadcast your matches to Discord upon request. That is a requirement, so we're able to do coverage of the tournament. All right, we brought in a bunch of spot removal. This is probably a matchup where I just don't want Revenge Revival, right? I probably just want to be a rock deck. against aggro. Yeah, you should test your ability to broadcast to Discord before tomorrow, ideally. You just join join any voice channel in any Discord server and click uh, go live and then select your Magic Arena window. A little light on green mana, but reasonable spells. So I'm going to keep it. I need a black green mid-range deck. What are we playing right now? That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. Put that one right thar. Right thar. It is super, super easy, Hippity. I simply open both both people's discord streams and then window capture both of them in obs and then crop the top one to just show the hands no you have to run two instant so i have two instances of discord installed on my computer with two different accounts they're logged into so you, you can't watch two streams simultaneously in one version of Discord. But you can, you can, however, install Discord a second time. The real, the real trick is the time-shifted feature matches we figured out for this time through. We, uh... I have, I have Andrewed at his house, um, also recording a match like that in OBS to a file, and then I'm SFTPing into his house to play his file as he still writes to it in real time via VLC, because we don't have a spectator mode. <laughs> that's, that's the real... The real, the real screwery is that. Nailed it.
And the business of just racing with a veto activation here. Huh, maybe that maybe that's better. Yeah, I could have I could just do that. I mean, well now we'll do that. You also don't like... Yeah, you're super off base. The reason why Revival is good is look at my deck. Revival is good in my deck even when I'm not... Even when I don't have Veto in play. This deck is great and Revival is good because I have things for my graveyard that I can return with it. I'm not all in on it as a combo card. Yeah, both, both halves are very good. Would you like to trade, trade, trade creatures here? You would. I think this deck could be competitive in the next open. I've played half a game with it, so obviously it's perfect. It is currently undefeated, that's true. Although we're down a game in this match. Swag, swag, people conceding to swag, dag chat. Feels like, feels like home. This is tough. Um, no removal spells in the opener feels a little bit bad. To be fair, I did have the decency to shove a... It's a good draw. I did have the decency to shove a combo kill into my black-green mid-range deck, so... I did, I did at least do that. Do you have a 4-4? Four, four? Uh, possibly half quarter. The real Doctor Destroyer. Thanks for the 12 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Let's get you a sword to go with that shield. So, we're done here. get to randomly eat things like demonic embrace 
with running running drag tusks here we should be good but i just can't beat the scavenging ooze Uh, Shillionaires can put a deck in the queue. Alright, first Boreal Grazer matchup. This is the hard one, chat. Tron. Tron deck beats mid range deck. News at 11. Let's find out how bad it is. Their deck is mostly mana, so I'm going to leave them their ramp spell. Just hope we can brick them off on threats for a little bit. Nice, Beansy. Beverly Shields. That's where you want to be. Just chilling. Just chilling. Do, 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 do. So the 25 months, Stephen Douglas Weeks. I appreciate that. Welcome back. We've got six differently named lands, so this is going to start making zombie tokens. Uh, un if your Twitch sub isn't registering on Melee, unlink and then relink it. So go into your go into your settings and remove it and re-add it. We had a command for this. Does it still exist? Man. Someone deleted. Deleted our rock command at some point. What a travesty. Hey, Brian. Thanks for the biddies. Pretty been a good one wherever you're at. Do I Jade Light in the hopes that I can combo them next turn? That's probably Greedy, right? So Magic just had a new set release yesterday, Guard the Great. So yesterday, today, and tomorrow is going to be all Magic. I'll be back to Daily Rune Terror stuff next week. I suppose if I Jade Light... I suppose if I Jade Light and I don't hit the combo, I could even still, like, threaten to activate Veto next turn, which is pretty good. Oh, I should have played the tap land. In my head, this was a memorial because I'm playing one memorial, but that, like, definitely should have played a tap land there. Auto tapper, tap both green. Yeah, it had to. Darn, darn you, auto tapper, not letting me cheat. This 
So next turn, they're going to get to... So they're going to get to Field of Rune at end of turn here. Which means that they'll make two more zombies. So they'll have uh, seven zombies. And I can block a bunch of them. I think I'm Maelstrom pulsing the Yorian here. And then their field will give me an untapped green to eat something with the scavenging ooze. But then I'm basically committing to not having a way to clean up zombies. I think that's fine though. I think I'm supposed to just kill their flyer here. The fact that I played castle by mistake last turn means that they get to field my utility lands here though, which sucks. What's Vito's champion spell? <laughs> Really, really wish he had one of those right now. For people that aren't familiar, the equivalent of legendary cards in Runeterra turn into an instant or sorcery that you can cast from your hand when you draw a second copy of them. If I was to play in the open tomorrow, what would I play? Uh, I don't know. If the green-black Citadel deck is good, I'd probably play that. It looks like a little bit interactive and has a combo kill. This deck's been better than I expected it to be too, though. I could see myself playing this. Do I block with this? Yeah, I think so. Is Vito in the Citadel deck? No, it doesn't solve any problems that deck has. As always, you can see deck list for what we're going to be playing later today. Linked uh, in the deck queue on my website. So they have 10 zombies. There's one creature, two creature, red creature, blue creature. So if I shock this and I go to four, then I go back up to six. And this will be a five, six, seven, eight, nine, which would put me at a virtual 15. And I'd be blocking three and taking 14. So if I shock this and I'm technically not dead, but... There's really not any huge value in doing that, I don't think. So I think I'm just playing this tapped and passing. Thanks to Vito's activation, we're at least not dead on board. And actually, if they attack with everything, we kill them on the backswing. So if we can fade interaction from them, we're actually in an okay spot here because they can't attack. Yeah, they die. They die on the backswing to Vito's activation again. Uh, tier 2 and Tier 3 subs have special indicators on their sub icons now. Something Twitch added recently. Our matchup is hard. Why? Like, people talking about cards and telling me it's hard. Can you explain why? Because, like, we're in a position here where, like, we have, like, car cards in our deck that just, like, kill them off the top. Like, can, can people explain to me why they think we're in a bad spot here? Like, we're, we're literally in a position where, like, either player can top deck action to win the game and people are acting me act, talking like this matchup's impossible and I'm just going to lose it. So, like, please be descriptive and specific and help me understand why you think I need things. Like, they they drew a spell first. Sure, they drew a spell first. If I play the second veto out, I literally am dead on board. Good try, though, Twitch chat. Yes, Declan. It 
just look at your past videos, bud. So even, even if I gained a life there, my opponent was attacking with enough zombies. I was blocking three. I wasn't gaining enough to, uh, to be able to survive. Um, and honestly, uh, I think our main deck's kind of just what we want here. None of these cards with the sideboard really explicitly help us. I guess, I guess scavenging use isn't stellar, but they're probably, they're probably a... Uro deck, which means scavenging use is fine. Do we bring a trophy for their fields? Nah, I don't think so. For reference, I am just timing people out today when they suggest I warp my deck every time we play a different matchup. If you all if you always change your deck and change your sideboard every time you run into a different deck and try and just put optimal cards for whatever the last deck you put you played against is, you're just like endlessly chasing your tail and not making good or intelligent decisions. So again, identify pick out problems, identify solutions. Our deck has a combo kill in it. I think the fact that we have a combo aspect and that Vito can just kill them through blockers means we're probably okay here. I know it feels bad that we just lost and like the gut instinct Twitch chat response is I lost a game. I need to like change my deck an incredible amount to try and fix the game that I just lost. That's an incredibly short-sighted approach in my opinion. I get, I get that it feels bad that, like, the opponent drew a spell last game after we drew a bunch of lands in a row, so, like, we died and they didn't, but, like, that's just how magic works. It's a lot, of, a lot of games of magic where you're just gonna brick off and die and they draw a spell. Just gotta, gotta, gotta roll with the punches. Doesn't mean you need to adjust your deck every time you do it. That's why, in general, it's better to approach it from a theory perspective as opposed to a, this thing just happened, I feel bad about this thing just happened, adjust my deck immediately. I played a green source here, so that's why I can eat the two cards from their bin here, because they're likely an Uro deck, so like, incidentally eating their graveyard has some value. They could also be playing things like Tamio, stuff like that. Explore creature, explore creature, explore creature, explore creature. Nailed it. I'm actually gonna bin that, I think. I use, I use my powers for self gain. Getting kind of punished for not killing this last turn. I guess I should have. 
Okay, I just assumed they were gonna Clarion to kill all of these, and I guess that was a bad assumption. So I'm missing four points of damage here because of my sequencing. Excuse. Who's is out of Clarion range now, though, so that's nice. Yeah, I wanted to prioritize eating my opponent's graveyard because of her own considerations. Yay! Magic's fun! Yay! Mid-range in 2020! I really don't know who looked at the current state of magic and was like, we needed more Ugin the Spirit Dragon in it. I guess we were going to get it into this format eventually anyways, because Pioneer is coming, but like, yeah. Yeah, feels, feels bad, man. Can't, can't quite play this and Thrag Tusk in the same turn. <sighs> Don't call it a comeback, chat. Don't call it a comeback. Hit me, dealer. <laughs> record this is why talk about problems identify solutions is good because this game was a fantastic example of why all the knee jerky people that i timed out after the first game that were like you need languish you need you need virulent plague like when you think about how the games look that you're actually losing field of the dead isn't really the problem like, Field field of the Dead is not the thing that's keeping my deck from being competitive in that matchup on average. It's the Hydrate Crisis. It's the Ugins. It's the Ulamogs. Those are the things that I'm not beating out of the ramp deck. And the cards that people were trying to identify to recommend that we board in or add to our deck don't actually solve the problem with that we're having. So again, you need to be able to take a step back from the perspective of, okay, what did I lose that game? And think about, okay, how do these games play out? What are what are the things that are happening on average? My average draw, what does my average draw look against their average draw? What tools do they have that are happening that are actually beating me? I mean, to be fair, the previous opponent we just played against, their deck is likely not great against... Um, their deck is likely not great against the aggressive decks in the format. I think I'm supposed to take hostage. All their all their cards are real good against us. Deck's just way greedier than ours. It's a good good reminder that there's always a bigger fish out there. Is this the same opponent? I don't think so. Alright, they stumbled. Let's kill him. Not quite Siege Rhino, but all growed up. Oh no! Don't hostage take her, my Thrag Tusk! How will I ever win the game now? No, not my Thrag Tusk! I mean, they're gonna lose, but like, that's uh. Is this the same person we just played against? This is the same person we just played against, right? I think that's actually true. What's going on, Nemesis? No, I'm not playing standard till rotation. I 
I do think that because of Ugin, I should board in trophy here. I didn't board in trophy last time, and I should. Ooze is probably a little whatever. Maybe split the difference with Ragtusk. So I'm going to cut a land and a 5 drop. Let's do that. Yeah, if you know Thraktos is good, I think these ramp matchups are like, like we have to get a little bit lucky. It's like playing Jund against Tron. Like sometimes we're going to be able to punk them out with the veto combo kill, but in general, not too bad. He needs a green source, but good otherwise. This is not the same person. Okay. Hard ramp times, good times for variety streaming. You're not wrong. I have a bunch of a bunch of two drops here, so that's nice. Yeah, and like, the, and one of the things that's important to understand about magic is that like, just because this matchup's gonna be hard for us doesn't mean I need to make, I need to make a bunch of adjustments to my deck and try and change that fact. Like, it's it's okay for your magic deck to have bad matchups, it's just like how magic works. Alright, we know they're playing Deafening Clarion, so I'm going to play Jade Light Ranger this turn rather than Scavenging Ooze, because next turn I can Scavenging Ooze and get it out of Clarion range. Why were you timed out? I think I told you why you were timed out. Let me check, though. Oh, you were just timed out because you were a mod without a sword. Oh, someone else I was thinking of. I only have three cards in their bin for now. I'm going to go ahead and Remorse this turn, I think. It's a good beat. I'm going to decline putting the Scavenging Goose into play because I think it's important that I exile Uro with this. The downside is this gives them an opportunity to draw a Thought Erasure and take my Scavenging Goose, but they're more likely to draw a Removal Spell than a Thought Erasure, so... It. Watch the auto tapper with your scavenging ooze mana. You are timed out because mod on mod violence is irresistible, basically. So, I'm going to eat something out of my graveyard here, because it lets me draw a card. Okay. Veto into Thrag Tusks here. Could pressure the opponent out. Doo 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 doo. Brick! Brick, 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 brick. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. Yeah, yeah, and even if they killed Vito here, we get to revival into Thrag Tusk. See, chat? Sometimes you can do it. Oh, yeah. There you go. Cast Splinter Twin. Cast Splinter Twin. Thank you for the 15 months, Hybrid. I appreciate it. Welcome back. Hey, right, this is it. You want a deck that I'd play tomorrow in the open? Play this deck. It's a crappy mid-range deck with a combo kill. This is this is the one, chat. This is, this is the one.
Don't ask me how you sideboard the mirror. I don't have any suggestions. <laughs> and like they swept us two times that game, right? Like they wrapped us twice, then we killed them. Feels good, man. There are still plenty of spots in the Hoaglandia Open. We're up to 80 folks in there, it looks like. So we should be playing a historic tournament sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. tomorrow. You can join that on MTG Melee. Following the instructions here. Uh, it's again slow, but I think it's a keep in the dark. If they're playing something aggressive, we're probably going to die. But I don't think I mulligan all my colors, good spells. That's true. The sweepers were just one for ones because I uh I drew cards and dead. Got it. Two drop, please. One wild growth walker, please. What's the white for? The revenge half of Revenge Revival. Uh, there are a lot of expensive spells in that deck, Jack. Generally speaking, you want to be aggressively... You want to be aggressively banking spell mana in the early turns. Welcome to the party. Right on time. Not a moment. Not a moment too soon. I'd like to I'd like to point out a comment I just timed out in chat because it's a very useless comment and I think co comments like this get made all the time and I think not only are they bad noise in Twitch chat but they also are are detrimental to you as a player. So someone said don't underestimate the goblins deck they'll kill you out of nowhere. So one I didn't say anything to downplay or underestimate the goblins deck. Two, what the fuck does that actually mean? Like, what what is the actionable steps and game actions that I take to not underestimate the Goblin deck? Like, how are my decisions different with that mindset? Or is it is it just noise to bang into the Twitch chat off the keyboard? Like, again, like stuff again, focus on the details. Focus on the specifics. What what does that actually mean? How do I translate what you're saying into actionable things in the game itself? Thanks for the 20 months, Gazney. I appreciate that. Welcome. Thanks for keeping me around. All right. What am I cutting here? I want to bring in spot removal and the languish. Feel like most of my things have tools here. Nah, PG thirteen movies get one f bomb. YouTube YouTube doesn't make me tag it with strong language unless I swear constantly. So, nah. Yes, yeah, Mukalu, unlink and then relink on melee. I think I'm cutting Beto. I think I'd rather have these to return my Explore creatures. That's close though. Could go either way. It's fine. Not amazing, but fine. 
to the 15 months jelly and gaming watch walk welcome back watch out for these bits they came out of nowhere they really did he walk thanks for the support I mean, I don't really care who they were replying to, Sahar Hat. Their statement was still was still bad regardless for the reasons I just dissected. I guess it's worth noting if these revenge revivals were vetoes here, I'd be better off. I wasn't sure if I wanted to cut revenge revival or veto during sideboarding. Also, the idea that, like, the Goblin's deck kills you out of nowhere is also, like, kind of some hot nonsense. Like, the Goblin's deck builds up a board pretty consistently over a few turns. So, like, the idea that it, like, pops up out of nowhere and kills you is, like, also just nonsense. It's just, like, not, not true. Apologies, we already covered this. The MTG Melee stage used to submit a deck list before the tournament start date. The MTG Melee page says deck lists Submit your deck list by Saturday, July 18th by 7 a.m. CDT. That is literally, literally what the page says. Where, where are you seeing it says submit it before the day of the event? Control, control effing for deck list says, uh, says July 18th in two different places. Please let me know. Does it give you a deadline or a countdown timer? Can you let MTG Melee fake folks know that, Smookaloo? That's not something I have control over. I agree. I agree that that verbiage sounds confusing, but that's not something I control. It's something on their end. I think we're dead at this point, right? Very, very dead. I believe, let me sign in and check my thing. Yeah, according to these settings, the deck list deadline submission ed should be... Uh, should be when, when registration closes. Two, two mana spell here is a great draw.
Burn them out as they start to stabilize is a good plan. Trade, trade, and true aggro strategy. Huh? I think I take Nylea because it's their play next turn. I like they're pretty likely to turn it into a creature. Okay, I think I think because of curve considerations we take the Nylea. Second second remorse makes that super exciting. Vivian's very good here. This will be fun to watch. Start with this and see where we go. We're fit enough to survive. Are they dead? They're dead because they didn't attack with this, right? No, are we one short? Because we're going to go... We're going to take five down to nine, which means we go to 18, and then they take half. Yeah, we're going to be one point short here, right? Because of the death touch? Super unfortunate. So, because this had death touch, because this has death touch and a trample, if I blocked here, I'd still take, uh, I'd take five. I assume they're going to kill Vito here. Get him. Probably not a lot of graveyard synergies. Probably cut the scavenging uses. Yeah, the fact the fact that for revenge to work or health total has to be kind of high feels real bad. I don't know if this is a languish matchup. Their their threats are kind of big in terms of how much toughness they have. I feel like it's probably not. 
Hey, I'm supposed to leave scavenging use in just because they're a creature deck and I'm going to kill a lot of their stuff. I can see that being the case. Sure. That's real good. Nip, nip that one right in the bud, huh? That's fine, right? Next turn we can go Veto plus removal spell. I'm I'm confused by your statement, Larry. Maybe you just haven't been paying attention, but like I've boarded in removal spells in a number of matchups. I think we've used almost every card in our sideboard except for the ones that are explicitly there for the control matchups. So I guess I'm just confused by your statement of we're not really using the sideboard. Again, my recommendation would be if you find yourself not using your sideboard, you should, again, sideboarding is an exercise where you should be thinking about how you sideboard before you play the games. You should sit down... You should sit down and think about how... Um, how you want to board in matchups before you're actually playing them. Gas Splinter Twin. That was that was just like we drew it up, chat. It was just it was just like we drew it up. Is Thrag Tusk too slow here? Would I rather have Agonizing Remorse than Thrag Tusk? Probably not, especially on the dried where there are things to play to the board. Fewer clicks of split your twin. Yep. Kill your stuff, kill your stuff, kill you. The fact that Vito's activated ability is so good with creatures is is really something I undervalued, I think. The the big thing that my big takeaway from playing this is I'd kind of like to explore some other Vito decks as well, because Vito's ability to be self-enabling is something I really underestimated looking at the card initially. Definitely did did not think that he would enable breaking board stalls as well as he does. Yeah, yeah, big agree, Steric. I think I've been that. Just need to hit my land drops here. I'm gonna attack here because I'm not blocking. White black vamps with Vito has been really good. I believe that. But when we played Vampires before, it felt really bad in the face of uh, Grull. But with Grull getting a little bit of a power level down tick, it might be fine now. Yeah, and I mean, like, slightly lower powered level formats like Historic and Pioneer and stuff like that tend to not have single sideboard cards that win the game. 
like standard pioneer standard pioneer historic your changes are generally small things that push your deck in small percentage points not i have to mulligan for this card or i lose the game in these matchups there aren't there aren't ley line of the voids and rest in pieces and stony silences that you're looking for Something to note here, we're currently missing white mana, but the revenge half of Revenge Revival is literally the only white card in our 75. That's why there's pretty few white sources in our mana base. Hey, thanks for the third of a year, Avocat uh, Gori. Glad to have you playing the open tomorrow. Let's play one more, one or two more of Vito Rack before we slide on to some elves. Give people some beatdowns. Does it ever ask you that when you lose? Yeah, occasionally. And hopefully, if Wizards of the Coast is good at evaluating their data, they're keeping track of how people respond to that question when they win versus how they respond when they lose. Yeah, yeah, this deck definitely, definitely solidly exceeded expectations for me. Feels like a very, very reasonable mid-range, mid-range style deck. Am I a vegan? I'm a vegetarian. Yeah, early, early deck of the day candidate for sure. Is Leyline of the Void not legal? Leyline of the Void is legal. Why do you, why do you ask? They get to start activating Golos here. Gonna need to dodge a few bullets, but if we can get to uh, Revenge Revival in two turns, we could we could win this game with that way. I'm just hoping hoping they just have a bunch of mana stuff here to be linear with. Just want them to like not interact with my board ideally. I'm gonna jump block here to keep my health total high. So we're going to 21 here. We're going to 20. We're going to 26. So I just need them to not kill my lands, not kill my veto. Not kill me. Just kind of crossing our fingers and hoping they don't have it. Again, this is the card. We really can't beat this and Ugin. And there aren't there aren't really ways you can make an archetype like what we're playing better in a matchup like this against those cards. You just have to cross your fingers and hope they don't have it, or hope when they do have it, you can tag it with Agonizing Remorse. I think this is definitely a matchup that we got to get a little bit lucky to win, but I also don't think we're 0% in it. I need a specific dirty digits. Don't be vague. Give me card names. Uh, 
Uh, I think yeah, I don't know what cart what deck you're talking about, Chris. People that are talking about, if you're talking about exile effects to, like, exile the Ulamog after they've cast it, no, you're still gonna die. You've spent three cards, they got rid of your best thing. It's just not, not worthwhile. Unmort Eager Necromentia. No, their deck, they're not, they're not a one-trick pony. So their deck hits on too many, too many axes to just, like, Necromentia them. Like, you're, you're just gonna die to the rest of their deck. Like, I can't beat the Ulamog, but, like, I also can't beat a variety of other things that they're doing anyways. Yeah. Yeah, like, you, you also, like, aren't beating beating Ugin most games that they have it. I think Field of the Dead is actually their easiest card for us to beat. I think Field of the Dead ends up being pretty beatable a lot of the time. Our general general hope for winning matches like this should be to kill them before they get online, not try to interact with them. Again, being interactive, generally speaking, in magic is a trap. You should just be trying to run your opponent down most of the time. No, Obi-Wan. In fact, if you listen to the words that just came out of my mouth for the last the last 20 minutes, the last five minutes, last two minutes, however much time it was, I just got done explaining how putting in reactive cards, like, like they play Ugin, or they play Ulamog, and they, like, clear your board, and then, and then you kill their thing that, like, cleared your board, like, you still don't have any pressure left over. Like, you're still, you're still just dead. Again, you need to think about what is what does the game state look like after these things have happened. Like, okay, I don't have a board anymore. They don't they don't have their thing, but I don't have a board anymore, so I still can't win the game. Uh, if I draw an untapped land next turn, we can kill them with veto plus scoos, right? Need an, un need an untapped land here, chat. We have 26 lands in our deck. 26. Nailed it. Again, watch the auto tapper with your scavenging use activations. It'll get you nine times out of ten. Watch the auto tapper. See? Get a little bit lucky and punk them out. I don't think you need to make changes to these matchups to try and make it better. I think even if you take your deck, if you really want to beat decks like what this opponent is playing, you just shouldn't play this archetype we're playing. This archetype is going to struggle in these matches and you should just count on playing well and getting a little bit fortunate to win on occasion. I think we could make a bunch of changes to our deck to add a bunch of cards that are theoretically good here, and adding all of those cards won't meaningfully move the needle to, towards how likely we are to win. You want to beat the opponent's archetype consistently? Play something more aggressive than what we're playing. The Spirits deck we played yesterday would be a great, great recommendation. Felt very reasonable and consistent and powerful against the ramp strategies. Yeah, I think this shell's very reasonable, Beansy. I think it's going to struggle against the ramp deck, but that's just like mid-range 101, right? Yeah, and like, and you also have to understand, like, even if you skew a bunch of cards in your sideboard, you're like, okay, well, you very likely lost game one, right? So, like, if you're like 30% to win game one, even if you get to 50 or 60% post board, you're still not favored in the set, right? So, like, you make all these changes and make yourself worse in all these other matchups to, like, take a matchup that's bad and still leave it bad. It's just not, like, a good use of your... a good use of your time and your decisions. Digging for lands here. Want to go Veto, Thrag, Tusk, Revenge, Revival, hoping they have nothing. Because, again, if they have stuff, you probably can't win.
It's a real shame we don't have one of one of our removal spells here now. It's a card. I want to keep my life total high so that way revenge can be lethal here. Again, hoping to just stick an untapped land in the next two draws so we can curve Thrag Tusk into Revenge. Okay. Please don't kill me or my board. Alright. So we should be good. Sing the song, sing that you singing, baby. Ooh, baby. Ooh, say ooh. See? Just get, just get a little bit lucky. <laughs> smoke, smoke if you got him. Hadoken. Yeah, I like I like what we have here. The core of this seems super reasonable. And like that that just feels and like we play and this is the other thing too. The other thing and this is very hard to do in Magic in 2020 because take this match for example, we actually beat Ramp two of the three times we played against it in this in this set today, right? But all three matches even though I won two of them, I was on edge and felt behind the entirety of all the games and all of the matches. I was one beat away in every game that we won from the opponent's draw being slightly different and being something that we just couldn't beat, right? I believe we played three games in all of them, yeah. And like, we won two of the three matches, but we were just small breaks away from winning the one we lost and losing the ones we won. And the entire time, the games felt stressful and, like, not in a great way. So, like, it's very difficult to take a step back, especially as a newer player, and go, Okay, this felt bad, but what was actually happening? Is that the average that I expect to happen? Are there meaningful changes I can make that are actually going to move the needle there? One one thing we actually didn't get to see here. Hey, Saris, is thanks for the half year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. One thing we missed um, was that uh, my sideboard here. You'll note we never boarded in Thrashing Brontodon or Vivian or Duress. And someone commented it felt like we weren't boarding in some cards. And the reason why we never boarded those cards in was because we never hit the matchups that I put them in my board for. So Duress and Vivian here are cards for the control matchup to help you pick apart their disruption and generate a little bit of card advantage. And then Thrashing Brontodon, I think, is probably one of the best cards an archetype like this can play against red aggro. This is a card that has a good body that gums up the ground and it also prevents your opponent from punching through with Embercleave, which is great. And this is a tool that kills Embercleave that comes back with Revenge Revival. You know, honestly, after playing those sets that we just played, I know we cut down to three of these, but may maybe playing the full four is correct. The, the ramp matches that we won, a lot of them were on the back of having Revenge. Or like maybe, and this is something Splinter Twin did in Modern for a little bit, maybe you board the fourth copy of Revenge or like maybe like we talked about, you know, so and this is this is why thinking about how the games play out and how you win is important. We cut exquisite blood from the main deck because it doesn't really impact the board. But honestly, a fourth revenge and a copy or two of exquisite blood might actually be a good sideboard plan for beating ramp. Like I think people's instincts of we need to exile Ulamogs and we need virulent plagues to deal with zombie tokens. I don't think those are game-winning plans a lot of the time. 
I think rather the games we win in those matchups tend to be ones where we punk them out with the combo. So leaning into the combo is probably a better way to approach that. And I think if you wanted to test improving the ramp matchup with this archetype, I would try having four Revenge Revivals post-board and possibly some copies of Exquisite Blood here. I think rather rather than like try and like slow things down, instead lean into the, okay, I'm going to kick you in the throat and kill you. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So I don't think that's how... Let me rephrase. I don't think the combo kill is how we're going to win most of our games. However, I do think it's how we're going to win most of the games against ramp. So like we played against ramp three times in 90 minutes. So in that set, it felt like we were trying to combo kill a lot, right? But against aggro decks, against mid-range decks, against control decks, I don't think I don't think combo killing is how we want to approach it. But again, if you want to make the ramp matchup better, I think that's the axis you want to attack it from. All right, speaking of aggro decks, it's going to be it for this set. If you missed any of it, we played it for about 90 minutes. It'll all be up on my YouTube channel and my website later tonight. Easy, easy deck of the day contender to start. Would adding Phyrexian Tower in order to ramp faster to revenge be helpful? No. I think the colors of my mana base are already kind of strained playing these cards. I don't have a lot of spare creatures to sacrifice. All right, up next, we are going to kick the tires on some elf aggro. I'm going to hit a quick ad roll while I get things set up and flipped over. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. we got a bunch more historic coming up yet today. Thanks for hanging out, folks.